And so Timbal said, I'm going to defend myself and my defense is truth. So I want to see your data. Let's have the data. So, so people funded him so he could get the data. Well, he's having a heck of a time getting data. Even you, in a lawsuit where you have a legal obligation under discovery to get the data, they're just not giving the data. So it, it's a premise of science that you, another scientist has to be able to check everything you did. And when you can't even get the raw data, and you can't even know what algorithms they used to fudge that raw data, or to manipulate it, or to put it into their program, and you can't know what the code of the program is, you can't know anything unless you're part of the in-group who is you know, sworn by your professional ties never to break these vows that you're going to be critical of them. That's the situation we're in right now. But there is a lot at stake. It's always the same thing that's at stake, is uh, careers. Oh, yeah. It's about careerism. That's what's at stake. This is what drives the profession. And so you've got the, the, the funding agencies and their, and their councils and their committees decide where the funding is going to go, and then the people who want to advance their careers jump in there and do what's needed and make sure that it gets done the right way to advance their careers. This, this is the establishment of science. This is how it happens. And if you are critical of it, you get ostracized and you know you don't get published in the best journals and you don't get a lot of funding and so on and that people on that list that I showed you that's the situation that they're in it's the peer review peer review is is the biggest control mechanism of all right um, in fact it was invented to control science in the interest of the government peer review did not exist in, in uh, before about 1950. Albert Einstein got one of his papers peer-reviewed the first time at Physical Review and he freaked out. He was so insulted. <laughs> it's like the editor is sending my paper that I sent him in confidence to someone else to evaluate? That's never going to happen again. He never submitted a paper to Physical Review ever again in his entire career. He was so insulted. Peer review did not exist until the, the funding agencies in the U.S. and the government decided this would be the best way, the most efficient way, is to have self-control. Uh, and uh, they, they, they installed the program that way. What you had before, which was much, much better, was all this discussion that you wanted to have, if you wanted to have it, you had it. Then you sent your paper off when you were satisfied with it. You sent it off to be published. The, the editor uh, had to, as a scientist, evaluate if this was scientifically sound enough to be published. Once he made that decision, he published it. After it was published, everyone in the world could disagree with it. Everyone in the world could give their opinion about it. Everyone in the world could repeat your experiment to see if it was true, could do whatever they wanted. That's where the scientific discussion came from. But at the way it works now is, you can't even get published for everyone to be able to see it. Okay. So once peer review was installed, a lot of people just, just couldn't, couldn't get published in the journals that people were reading and in the journals that were widely distributed because the peer reviewers were competitors of these authors and so on. It's, it's an internal kind of censorship, well, blocking, competitive kind of nastiness. Like there's, it, it was routine for review, it still is routine for reviewers to sit on papers, not review them for months and months. In other words, to stall while their students are repeating or using the good idea and then publishing before. There's lots of cases of that. It's, it's well documented. You, oh, this is the trick. In science, you have to decide for yourself. You read the ideas, you read the content, you read the logical argument and you have to decide for yourself if you're going to agree with this scientist or not. You don't believe it because some committee has reviewed it and it's published in a good journal, which is what people are doing now a lot of the time. Okay? A lot of career scientists, they don't even ask themselves if it's true or not. They just say, well, it was published in physical review letters or it was published in Nature, or it was published in Science. So. I know everyone's citing it, so I'm not going to oppose it, I'm going to use it. Okay, they, the, the question of truth is not entering anymore. It's what do I need to do to publish in the best journals? 
And what do I need to do not to upset the people who are publishing in the best journals? Okay? And because they're the leaders, they're the ones that are getting good funding and so on. And it doesn't matter if it's not scientific? Of course it doesn't matter. It's completely secondary. It's, 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 a, it's, 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 it's a career. It's a career. It's an establishment. It's not, it's not a, a machine that seeks truth. Truth is, um, truth is something, it, truth is a character defect. Someone who searches for truth has a character defect. They're, they're at a disadvantage. They're going to publish less. They're going to give themselves more trouble. They're going to have more sleepless nights. They're at a real disadvantage compared to these guys. You have to distinguish between the architects of the system and the players within the system. The, most of the players within the system um, are following something that they feel is the right thing. And they have justified it to themselves. But the architects of the system, like when peer review was installed, um, are, at a, are working at a higher level and for different reasons. There's a, D David F. Noble is a historian of science. He has explained this. He studied it. The, he wrote a paper about how peer review was, was, was started and why it was started. So you have to look at institutionally how it was created. You can't, of course, most scientists think of themselves as ethical principal searchers of truth.